everyone and welcome back. In this tutorial, we'll see how you can integrate Auth2 into your Zapier integration. So let's go back to our project. And this is how our project looks like. It's It just has an authentication.js and a test associated to it. Let me get some more screen so that we can actually understand this file first. So the first thing is read, okay? I would request you to read this particular file. So what does it need? It needs a client ID. It needs a client secret. It will return an access token and a refresh URL. You need a refresh URL out here. Again, you need the same client ID, client secret. You need to run a test, okay? You need to run a test. Uh, if you look at the comments out here, the test auth is basically like an endpoint, like user.me, where it can return you some JSON so that you know that it works successfully. So again, what do we need? We need client ID, client secret. Now, from where do you get that? Every integration goes ahead and provides you with client ID and client secret. For the connector that we are working with, that is the Nutrient connector, you will see that there is a page. I'll share a link in the description section below with which you can go ahead and put in client ID, client secret, authorization, token URL, and refresh URL. I'm going to take this to another screen so that it becomes easier for me to actually copy paste stuff. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, but you get the gist, I'm not cheating. I'm just trying to save up some time. So let's start. First thing, we need to get the access token, right? So for the access token, I'm going to use the OAuth URL so that I can get the access token. I'll chain this. I will hard code the client ID and client secret for now. What we are going to do is later on, we can create environment variables. I'll show you that. I'm going to paste in the client secret and let me go ahead and update the refresh token URL. The templates that Zapier provides is very good. You just have to fill in the blanks, okay? Read the template, read the code, read the comments in the template so that you go ahead and understand what you need to go ahead and do next. So I'm going to quickly copy paste a few things, client ID, client secret. And if I scroll down, we will look at this section, the test section a little bit later. Uh, we need to fill in more blanks as you see or to is web authentication. So we need to go ahead and actually provide the authorization URL as well. I'll paste it in. Going ahead and pasting in the client ID. Now, most of the time there is a confusion as to I don't have state. So if you don't have state, if you don't have a redirect URL, just comment it out. Um, this looks good, the access token. This will run the test, which we have not configured yet. So let's go ahead and try to understand the test part of it, okay? So firstly, before we run the test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to take this back on the screen. I copied content from here and I will go back to the low code solutions, Power Automate, Start a free trial, fill in the form. I already filled in the form, so I'll click on sign in. I'm going to type in my creds, right? Uh, it shows the subscription ID, etc., etc. So if you see, I authorized myself into it. Tell you, so this has to be a similar process in a Zapier. Like we go in, sign in, and once you sign in, what should happen? Um, it should run an operation technically. We don't have an endpoint such as user.me, which returns the username. Rather, we'll go ahead and deduct one operation for testing purposes such that we know that it works. So I'm going to pick an endpoint out here. I'll go ahead and pick up the convert endpoint. I'm going to copy this input data onto a notepad, right? And this is how our body would look like. Now, that being said, uh, to run this, we need to hard code a few things so that we can test it. So let me quickly go ahead and modify this body a little such that I can create a test out of it. 
so I will run a test like this now the convert endpoint how did I get it this is the convert endpoint it's a post request I use json.stringify to go ahead and send a sample file and then I passed it the headers right simple now if you have an API you can use z.request and follow a similar structure I will also go ahead and add this in the description section below so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the JS I'm going to go to my authentication.js and let me go ahead and comment out this because I don't have an endpoint like that paste this in right this is how it is uh, this looks good this looks excellent so I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal and I'll say Zapier right say Zapier and I'll say Zapier.build so that I can actually create a pushable solution so Zapier space build if there are errors it will go ahead and show me the errors it tells me I did not run npm install I should have done that initially but that's fine I can run npm install it will install all the packages that I need perfect so the packages have been installed now I'll say zapier.build if you see it's going through the steps and it's validating each steps it went ahead and copied the project into temp it did everything it also went ahead and created a build for us which is out here at this point I can say zapier push right I can say zapier push it goes ahead and gives me an error which is actually a warning and it tells me to say zapier register right if you have an existing project you can link to it so here it will ask me a few questions what is the title of your integration so I'll say nutrient document converter please describe it in less than 140 words so let me take some help from the swagger I'll just copy this line paste it in what is the home page which is optional but I know so I'll just say I'm using nutrient so I'll say nutrient dot io low code this is what I want the URL is there I will say it's public if you want to make I'll say it's private uh, not public I just don't want to publish it to everyone want to do that I'm employed by nutrient so that's good uh, what is this app about this app is about content management um, do you want to subscribe for updates for your integration yes so what it did is that it went ahead and registered the app now at this point I can say Zapier dot push and this should push the Zapier integration um, so let me go back so I have my Zapier out here quickly check my integration so it takes me to the developer platform and here you see my friends I have the nutrient document converter integration that I just went ahead and created now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say Zapier app it's fine come on just let take me uh, let me go ahead and create the app I will just create a, want to do is maybe I create a schedule just run it on schedule let's say this event is every month okay I'm going to delete this anyway but what I'm interested in is I'm interested in nutrient so here you see my friends you have the nutrient converter online but it shows me that I cannot test it because there are no actions available understand this there are no actions or triggers or anything available to test your integration you need to go ahead and add a action or a trigger or a resource so that you can test it so in the next tutorial we are going to go ahead and add a action which is known as creates and then we will go ahead and test our integration thank you have a great day bye bye